Chapter 5. Leader Alambro Lambrobu, his mission, his ministry. B. My mission. To teach. To sanctify humanity. To establish the kingdom of God. To do what nobody, angel or man, has ever done in the world. The only thing that can save you in brotherhood is the word of God, delivered to you daily. When you confess you have quarreled, you have no patience, and indulge in other vices, it is because the word of God does not dwell richly in you. You cannot stand firm in the Lord if you do not receive the recondite teachings of the Holy Spirit. The field is white, but the reapers are few. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 8 And a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. I have not come into the world to joke. I have not come to teach the word of God in theory, but in practice. In the church denominations, when you are accepted as their member, you will only be asked whether you believe in Jesus Christ as your personal savior. When you reply in the affirmative, you will be told to go and continue in paying your dues, and whether you practice the word of God or not, you are sure to go to heaven. No matter how heinous your sins may be, whether you commit fornication and adultery, or indulge in occultism, once you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior in the church denominations, you are saved. Such teachings are the teachings of demons. In all the church denominations, the only aspect they know is, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. But as, for his teachings, exhortations, injunctions and commandments, none of the church denominations is able to put them into practice. James chapter 2 verses 14 to 17. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith, and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked, and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. James chapter 2 verses 14 to 17. Brethren, you profess to believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, but you fail to practice his teachings. Does this then mean you believe in him? Whosoever professes to believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, but fails to abide by his teachings is a liar. In the same token whosoever professes to have faith, without practicing the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ is a deceiver. Faith without works is dead. Just as you believe in the existence of God, the demons also believe in his existence. Even though the demons believe in God, they continue to steal, fornicate, commit adultery, indulge in concoctions and charms, without the least intention of practicing a single word of God. When some members of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star are in my presence, they pretend to be very religious, but when they depart from my physical presence, they start fighting and indulging in all manner of vices. Does this kind of behavior prove you have faith in the Holy Father? Matthew chapter 7 verses 21 to 23. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Matthew chapter 7 verses 21 to 23. Why will he deny these people? Similarly you are professing to be members of brotherhood with your white soutons, yet continue to tell lies, drink, fornicate, sue people to court, hurt one another, and indulge in all sorts of vices. Is this how brotherhood members should behave? Even if you fast for one month, and continue in sin, your fasting does not help you. It is of no benefit to you or to God. Even if you no longer eat meat, fish, stockfish and you are a complete vegetarian, yet you are stealing, you are easily exasperated, you envy and impute sins on others. For you to be a vegetarian, and continue in sin, is of no use to you, to God or the entire world. You also go about trying to resemble a leader Alambro Lambrobu, in the way he dresses. You wear white shorts, white short sleeved shirts and go barefooted. In the case of a sister, she puts on a white gown and a white headscarf, but indulges in fornication and other vices. What is the usefulness of wearing white and going about barefooted professing to be brotherhood? Do you know, the aim of the teachings is to bring you up, so you may resemble me. Which means you must not commit any sins. 
all the members of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, and the entire world should be informed. My mission on Earth is to lead the whole world to the accurate knowledge of truth. You must not beat your child, your housemate or your wife. You must not count sins on anyone, nor judge any person. You must not commit any act of sin. Now you are wasting your time, it is incumbent you put these teachings into practice. Do you know, one man should marry one woman. Each man has to have only one wife, for the whole of his lifespan. Nobody is to consult oracles or soothsayers and, you must not inject any black powder into your body, or rub any concoctions on your body. You must not believe in ghosts, mermaids, witchcraft or any evil forces. If you believe in these illusions, you are not a true and born brotherhood. At the moment, there is no member of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, who practices Brotherhood. Right now, it is only, when you come to Caliper at 34 Ambo Street, or 26 Mbo Road to see the leader physically, you can't see the real Brotherhood being practiced. Immediately you leave the presence of the Holy Father, you cannot find anyone practicing real Brotherhood. Show me any one person, who possesses all the virtues of God in him. Such a person would be a true representative of Brotherhood. When you come before me, you pretend to be very pious, but when you depart, you behave like your great-grandparents. You cannot compare this era with the time of our Lord Jesus Christ. When our Lord Jesus Christ was first in the world, before he shed his blood, his disciples did not receive the Holy Spirit. At that time, man was not united with God. After our Lord Jesus Christ shed his blood, man became reconciled with God and both of them became united. That was why our Lord Jesus Christ said, It is expedient, for you that I go away, for, if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. John chapter 16 verse 7. He also said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of Truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. John chapter 16 verses 12 and 13. Most of you are complaining, my teachings are new, and that most of them were not taught by our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ in his advent had a very short assignment, he only came to shed his blood. Since he only came for a short assignment, he did not come with his whole family. He came alone. Even if our Lord Jesus Christ had remained from that time until now, he would not have completed his assignment. All the Gospels I give to you daily are only introductory teachings, leading to my main assignment. If I do not do all these things, you will not come to the accurate knowledge of truth. I have known Adam, Moses, Abraham, Noah, Enoch, Elijah and all the other patriarchs. I have spoken about Abraham, Moses, Elijah and their assignments in this world. The work I have come to do on earth is so great, and significant no one has ever done such work before. It is also impossible for any other person to accomplish this work. The ability to make people to become wealthy is a small assignment. Money had existed in the world from time immemorial. Raising the dead, making the blind to see and performing miracles had been in the world, right from the time of Elijah. All these are minor assignments. The major assignment I have come to do has never been done before, nor will it ever be done again. It is to reform a sinner, and return him to the standard required by God, so he may live according to the expectations of God. Since the creation of man by God, have you ever found anyone in the world, who is able to reform a sinner? Right from the time of Adam, have you ever seen a man, who has been able to change himself, from this vile body, to the glorious body of our Lord Jesus Christ? I have told you, our Lord Jesus Christ did not attain the accurate knowledge of the truth. That was why, he became annoyed, and with a cane, drove out the people who were selling their merchandise in the temple. Today in this new kingdom of God, if you take up a cane and beat anyone, you have derailed from the path of truth. Any day you take up a cane and beat anyone, I will give you zero, and you cannot enter this kingdom. You know, our Lord Jesus Christ cursed the two cities of Bethsaida and Chorazin. Right from today whosoever curses or abuses anyone, cannot enter into this kingdom. Even though our Lord Jesus Christ cursed and abused, he did not commit sin, because that was his own assignment. I am not criticizing our Lord Jesus Christ, neither am I criticizing Moses. I am merely informing you, their assignments differed from my own. 
this is, so you may know exactly what assignment I have come to perform, at this close of the age. Many people in the world, who want to glory in vices always say, even our Lord Jesus Christ was angry, or that he changed water into a wine for people to drink. Our Lord Jesus Christ behaved in this way, because things had not yet been made perfect by then. That is to say, he had not yet shed his precious blood. The moment he shed his blood and made the pronouncement it is finished, John chapter 19 verse 30, everything was concluded. When we were using the old currency, the pound sterling, which was the legal tender then. At that time, you could use that money in buying anything you wanted. But now it has ceased to be the legal tender, if you use it now, you are acting against the law. I want to quote to you various passages from the Bible, so you may know the assignment of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is so you may guard against the errors and mistakes he made. Our Lord Jesus Christ wept and mourned when Lazarus died. But now, any day you weep or mourn, no matter the circumstances, you cannot enter this kingdom. Any day you say woe unto any person, then you have deprived yourself of this kingdom. Matthew chapter 11 verses 20 to 23. Then began he to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not, woe unto thee, Chorazin, woe unto thee, Bethsaida. For, if the mighty works, which were done in you, had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment, than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shalt be brought down to hell, for, if the mighty works, which have been done in thee, had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. Matthew chapter 11 verses 20 to 23. When you come into brotherhood of the cross and star, you are told all the things you should not indulge in. Therefore, if you entangle yourself in those things, which you were warned not to do, you are lost. I have come to establish the new kingdom of God on earth. This is the new heaven and earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 13. Moses in his own advent came to establish judgment. But our Lord Jesus Christ came to modify and confirm the judgment of Moses. My mission is to establish the new kingdom of God on earth, so the will of God may be done on earth, as it is done in heaven. In this new kingdom, I have nothing to do with abuses, annoyance, hatred or any vice. I have not come in order to judge or condemn you, but to make everything new. Therefore, no matter how badly behaved your children are, do not beat them. Do you understand the intricacies of the kingdom? The intricacies of this kingdom are quite clear to the outsiders. That is those who are not yet born into this kingdom. They know no one inside this kingdom is permitted to indulge in any manner of sin. I have told you, many of you do not understand my mission on earth. Just as you have in the secular world, various stages of establishments, like the magistrate courts, the court of appeal and the supreme court, so also, does the same situation prevail in the spiritual world. The supreme court is the equivalent of the Holy Spirit personified. Even, though, our Lord Jesus Christ cursed the scribes and the Pharisees, such a thing cannot happen in this kingdom. You are not to pronounce woe well unto any person, because this is the new kingdom of God, where righteousness dwells. You are not to curse or abuse anyone. Neither are you to frown your face. Any day you curse or abuse anyone, you are under the judgment of hellfire. John chapter 11 verse 35, Jesus wept. Perhaps you want to console yourself by shedding tears. Any day you weep in this new kingdom, you cannot enter into it. You are not to shed tears, or be sorrowful throughout your life. Our Lord Jesus Christ wept and became sorrowful, because he was in the flesh. This is the beginning of the spiritual assignment. Brethren, have you not read the small pamphlet in Brotherhood entitled, The First Step to God, which says, you must not shed tears. You must not cry or mourn in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. Is there any of you who is aware nobody is permitted to cry no matter the circumstances? To cry is the work of the flesh. All those who attend funerals and shed tears have scored zero. Do you know where a man comes from, or where he goes when he dies? Man is the property of God, and whatever it pleases him to do with human beings, he is entitled to do. You have no right to question him. John chapter 2 verse 15. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple, and the sheep, and the oxen, and poured out the changers' money, and overthrew their tables. 
John chapter 2 verse 15. All our Lord Jesus Christ did was what was written about him. If he had not accomplished all these things, he would not have been the one prophesied about. He did not make any mistakes. After accomplishing all that had been written about him, he made a pronouncement that is finished. John chapter 19 verse 30. Tomorrow, when you argue, our Lord Jesus Christ wept, turned water into a wine, and became angry, remember he told you, the work of the flesh was over. All of you know, when the battle is very fierce, the king himself will come and lead the army. All these facts prove to you, I know our Lord Jesus Christ, and the assignment he had come to perform. From time to time, Jehovah God and his Christ has to send a human being to the world for a specific assignment. Where one person stops, is where the other person will begin. The assignments of God can be likened to a contractor, who is erecting a building. It is not the bricklayer, who will do the roofing of the house, neither will it be the carpenter, who will handle the wiring of the house, and so on. The same thing happens, when God sends a person to perform a certain assignment on earth. When one person finishes his assignment, another person will continue from there. Our Lord Jesus Christ came and finished his assignment, by shedding his blood for the remission of our sins. The present assignment is an entirely different one. That is to establish the new kingdom of God on earth, as it is in heaven. The new heaven and the new earth, where righteousness dwells. I have told you, during the colonial era, there were many rules and regulations. If you rode a bicycle without a lantern, you have contravened the law. One person was riding a bicycle in the night, and he carefully hung a lantern on the bicycle, without lighting it. He was consequently arrested by the police for riding his bicycle without a lantern. You can't see the law was very flexible. It is for this reason laws are always amended. The man, who had been arrested told the police, he had been riding his bicycle with a lantern, in conformity with the law. Therefore the people, who made the law found a certain clause in the law needed amendment. So they instituted another law, any person who rides a bicycle should have a light on, or a lantern with light. Matthew chapter 5 verses 17 to 20. Think not that I am come to destroy the law, or the prophets, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven, but whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, that, except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 5 verses 17 to 20. These are the amendments to the laws of Moses. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, I have not come to destroy the law or the prophets but to fulfill. Except your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom mentioned in the statement is brotherhood of the cross and star. The disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ requested him to teach them how to pray. He taught them to say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, as it is in heaven. This is that kingdom they had prayed for so many years ago. The question is who is prepared to enter into this kingdom. This kingdom has nothing to do with sin. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 28. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. When our Lord Jesus Christ will appear the second time, he will have no association with sinners. At the moment, you are still calling him a friend of sinners. Do you think, he will come to continue the work of death, by associating with the evil ones? Who are those who are really waiting for the second advent of our Lord Jesus Christ? 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. Many of you are not looking for this kingdom. Rather you are looking for the mundane things, which have nothing to do with this kingdom. In this kingdom, only righteousness is expected. Nothing unrighteous will enter into it. 1 John chapter 3 verse 3. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even, as he is pure. How many people in the world have prepared themselves for this kingdom? You only come here to joke and play, seeking for only material things, which mean, that you do not want to enter, this kingdom. 
this thing you are joking with, will become a source of lamentation at the end of this generation. I have often told you, you do not understand the meaning of this kingdom. I have warned you not to compare me with Moses, Melchizedek, Adam, Elijah or Jesus Christ, because their assignments were different, and had already been completed. I have come to accomplish a new phase, which even our Lord Jesus Christ was not able to achieve. That is the establishment of the new kingdom of God, on earth. I know the reason why, so many people, cannot come into Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. I also know why, even members of Brotherhood, cannot refrain completely from sins. It is, because, your brethren in the church denominations indulge in fornication, preparation of concoctions and charms. They fight and quarrel, cause division and glory in vices. Yet, they claim, they will go to heaven. When they see you, they regard you as fellow Christians. For this commandment to refrain from concoction and charms, you should not drink, smoke, snuff or sue people to court, you feel, you should behave like fellow Christians. It is the same situation we have in brotherhood. We have different fellowships, like Christ students, Christ servants, the ordained ones, and the elders etc. A Christ servant is allowed to marry, and can live like an average brotherhood. The Christ students are not allowed to marry, or be given in marriage. They must be celibate. But now, nobody can see the difference between the Christ students and the average brotherhood. This is so, because most of the Christ students have defiled themselves with men and women. Many people are asking questions as to why the Christ students are not allowed to marry. Are they not also in this kingdom? Many people also want to know the difference between the ordained ones and the others, since they are all in this same kingdom. A great deal of people in the world attend spiritual churches, yet they fornicate, steal, quarrel, cause division, prepare concoctions and charms, and glory in vices. Have you heard what has been said to you, when our Lord Jesus Christ will return the second time, he will have no association with sinners? Do the church denominations understand, I have not come to have any share with them, at all? It has been clearly stated in the Bible, our Lord Jesus Christ will have no share with sinners, in his second advent. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 13 and 1 John chapter 3 verse 3. Members of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star are to be pitted, because they do not want to put the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ into practice. Some of them attend parties with members of the church denominations, they drink and become intoxicated. The word of God, which is given to you, is a two-edged sword. That is, why I am pleading with you, to refrain from all manners, of sin. The long patience of God should not be regarded as stupidity. Why are people anxiously waiting for the second advent of our Lord Jesus Christ? He came and shed his precious blood to reconcile man with God. He revealed God, as love, to all human beings. In addition he performed many miracles. He gave sight to the blind, raised the dead, cleansed the lepers and made the dumb to speak. Why do people still want him to come back again? Philippians chapter 3 verses 20 and 21. For our conversation is in heaven from, whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Philippians chapter 3 verses 20 and 21. The reason why the whole world is looking for our Lord Jesus Christ is so he may come and change our vile body from mortality to immortality. Since the creation of man, have you ever heard of a person who can change this vile body to the glorious body of Christ? If you are not reformed now, that is to say, you must refrain completely from all manner of vices, how will your vile body be changed to the glorious body of Christ? Now some of you have been completely reformed, what do you think our Lord Jesus Christ will do, when he comes back? Peter, Paul and the rest of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ were waiting for this time. That is why Peter said in 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 13, Nevertheless we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Is this a strange language? Where you find people quarreling, fighting, committing fornication, causing division and judging one another, can you say, righteousness dwells there? When people weep and cry, can you say, they are righteous? Where you find people cursing and abusing one another saying woe unto you, your family or country, can you say that is, where righteousness dwells? Brethren, you know, material things are no problem. 
but our problem is practicing righteousness, so our vile or mortal body might be changed to immortality. Therefore all those who are looking for him must purify themselves even as he is pure. If you are seeking for a new earth, then you must have love, peace, meekness, temperance, endurance, self-control, humility, tolerance and the spirit of forgiveness. Who will our Lord Jesus Christ choose as his disciples and who will rule with him in his second advent? Luke chapter 20 verses 34 to 36. And Jesus answering said unto them, The children of this world marry, and are given in marriage, but they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world, and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry, nor are given in marriage, neither can they die any more, for they are equal unto the angels, and are the children of God, being the children of the resurrection. Luke chapter 20 verses 34 to 36. In the whole world, how many people are prepared to follow our Lord Jesus Christ, and comply with these instructions? Many of you dance about professing to be brotherhood. How many of you are prepared to follow our Lord Jesus Christ? Our Lord Jesus Christ has said, Those counted worthy to inherit that new world, and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry, nor are given in marriage. I have been preaching to you, a special number of people are required in this new kingdom of God. They are the 144,000 virgins. All those who hope in him have made themselves holy, even as he is holy. How many people think of purifying themselves and making themselves holy even as he is holy? Since you are waiting for him, you should be perfect without spot or blemish. How many people in the whole world have fulfilled the laid down principles? Inside this new kingdom of God, you are not to indulge in any vice. Do you not see, your thoughts are at variance with the principles of this new kingdom? Some of you want to attain great heights in education, you long to be elected into many of the legislative posts, you want to become a president, commissioner, minister or permanent secretary. Some of you want to acquire all the wealth of this world. How many of you stop for a moment and consider entering into this new kingdom of God? Do you know, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace? Romans chapter 8 verse 6. Luke chapter 14 verses 26 and 27 states, If any man come to me, and hate not his father, and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross, and come after me, cannot be my disciple. How many of you are prepared to hate your parents, children, and family in order to enter into this new kingdom? Every day you put on your white suit on, and attend morning and evening prayers, but you are not prepared to practice the word of God, so that you may have eternal life. Revelation chapter 14 verses 3 to 5. And they sung, as it were a new psalm before the throne, and before the four beasts, and the elders, and no man could learn that psalm but the hundred and forty and four thousand, which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb with the silver he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Revelation chapter 14 verses 3 to 5. Who among you is prepared to comply with this instruction? From where were they redeemed? Are you not now on earth? Are you really prepared to be redeemed? Now all of you are now on earth, if after hearing this gospel you comply with it, you have left the world, which means, you are redeemed. Matthew chapter 19 verses 11 and 12. But he said unto them, All men cannot receive this saying, save they to whom it is given. For there are some eunuchs, which were so born from their mother's womb, and there are some eunuchs, which were made eunuchs of men, and there be eunuchs, which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. Matthew chapter 19 verses 11 and 12. Where do you stand? Are you for this new kingdom of God, or are you for the world? Are you still maintaining your position in this kingdom with the slogan, as the Father likes it? Do you want to wait, until all the people have been selected for this new kingdom of God, before your eyes become open? After God has selected the 144,000 virgins, the door will be closed, and you will not be able to enter. A fornicator will never enter this new kingdom of God. If you like, call the name of the Holy Father, Leader Alambro Lambrobu, 100 times, you will never enter the kingdom of God, unless you fulfill these conditions. 
1 Corinthians chapter 7 verses 29 to 34. But this I say, brethren, the time is short, it remaineth, that both they that have wives be, as though they had none, and they that weep, as though they wept not, and they that rejoice, as though they rejoice not, and they that buy, as though they possess not, and they that use this world, as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passeth away. But I would have you without fearfulness. He that is in very care for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord, but he that is very care for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. There is difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman care for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit, but she that is very care for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verses 29 to 34. It is, because, you do not understand the principles of this new kingdom of God, many of you regard brotherhood of the cross and star as a church, prayer house, school, or healing home. In brotherhood of the cross and star people are divided into different categories. Those who are prepared to practice the word of God and live by the word of God. Those who come to attend prayers and later go back to entangle themselves in the things of the world. Those who love the word of God but come and spread their mats and sleep, while the gospel is going on. Those who come to fight and struggle, when it is time for feast to be shared. Those who have witnessed the miraculous works of the Holy Spirit personified, and come only for fish and bread. When material things are brought before you, you fight and struggle for it. But for spiritual things you are not prepared to fight and struggle for it. You want to continue with the slogan, as the Father likes it. You want to continue with this slogan, until the judgment day, when it will be too late to change. People from all the nations of the world will come, and fill up this new kingdom of God. Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 to 26 states, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of being glory, provoking one another, and being one another. Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 to 26. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 9 to 11. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus, and by the Spirit of our God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 9 to 11. What do you think of these passages, which have been read out to you? What is your hope about this new kingdom of God? Every day you go about fornicating, committing adultery, and all forms of sins. You go about collecting money from people under false pretense. When you indulge in these things, do you think God is a respecter of persons? Matthew chapter 7 verses 21 to 23 states, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Matthew chapter 7 verses 21 to 23. Unless you practice the word of God, there will be no room for you in this new kingdom of God. Have you heard the text read out to you? This is so you will not complain, you were in brotherhood of the cross and star, but did not enter into the kingdom of God. If you are in brotherhood of cross and star, and yet fail to practice the word of God, you will not enter into this new kingdom. I am shouting and pleading with you, those who indulge in fornication, adultery, stealing, lying, deceit, envying, cunningness, anger, quarreling, fighting, gossiping, snuffing, heresy, lasciviousness, pomposity, division, laziness, covetousness, argument, flippancy, pride, fraud, bullying, murder, insult, rancor, vain thinking, 
aggravation, whispering, cursing, herbalism, traditional plays, worldly dance, swearing by blood, oath, inordinate lust, and evil concupiscence, both native and English treatments, occult science, burning of incense, playing of bands or drums, weeping, frowning of face, sighing, bribery, or being bribed, selfishness, beating of children, wife or servants, disobedience and lamenting, wearing of gold, pearl earrings, necklace, finger rings, piercing of ears, offering people drinks, keeping company with fornicators, mourning, keeping a mourning house, secret societies, such as Rosicrucian, Lodge, Abu, Ek, Ekpo, and others, court actions, backbiting, sacrifice, being present in worldly society, soothsaying, or worldly gathering, eating meat of strangled beasts, or meat of animals which die by themselves, and such in godly manners, will not enter. All your sins have been forgiven. All the sins you have committed from the time of Adam up till now have all been forgiven. For this reason you are all justified before God. I have no business with churches, prayer houses or service centers. Wherever you meet anyone, tell him or her to confess his or her sins, and become truly repentant, so they may avoid the wrath of God to come. This is the era in which the children of God have to judge the people of the world. Whosoever you forgive his sins, his sins are forgiven. Whosoever says he has no sin, his sins will remain with him. 1 John chapter 1 verse 8. Do not behave like the prophets of old, who had no hope of salvation. In this generation, salvation is nearer to you than the tongue to the teeth. Since all your sins have been forgiven, and you have been brought into this new kingdom, do not go back and get entangled with sins. Wherever you go, ask the people to confess their sins, and accept baptism in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. As for those who claim to have no sins, and are not prepared to accept baptism, pass them by, there is no way of salvation for them. This explains the reason why our Lord Jesus Christ could not do any effective work in his birthplace. Since you have been redeemed from this world of sin, woe, poverty, anguish, tribulation, and sickness, into this new kingdom of joy, peace, righteousness and holiness, you should not go back to commit sin again. Now all of you have been endowed with the power of the Holy Spirit. You have been commissioned to go into all parts of the world and forgive people of their sins. Do not try to convince anybody to come into brotherhood of the cross and starve. Can you see the promise of our Lord Jesus Christ? He had promised to pray the Father to send the Holy Spirit of truth to come and dwell with you. Have you now seen this promise manifested today? He says, you have received the Holy Spirit, and whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them, and whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. John chapter 20 verse 23. Why do you complain, when you are sent out to preach these good tidings to the world, you have no holy oil, holy water, or the power of giving visions? You do not require all these things. All you need to do is to gather people around you, ask them to kneel down, and confess their sins. Then you tell them to go, because their sins have been forgiven. When you do this, their sins will be forgiven, and all their problems will be solved. When people meet you and confess their sins, and are baptized, all their sins are remitted. They have received the Holy Spirit. Pass on from there to another place. Whichever school or church a person belongs to does not matter. Whenever somebody confesses his sins, and becomes truly repentant, and is baptized, then all his sins are forgiven. Can you now see, why a person baptized into the church denominations finds, his troubles, and afflictions still remain with him, because his sins have not yet been remitted? This is the reason why people jump from one church to another, seeking for salvation, but all to no avail. This is, because the church denominations do not have the Holy Spirit to forgive sins. Whoever wants to experiment on this lecture, can do so. Come into Brotherhood of the Cross and star as a woeful sinner, prostrate on the ground, confess all your sins, destroy all your idols and secret society books, withdraw your membership in secret societies, or worldly traditions, all sickness, afflictions, suffering will be solved instantly. The mighty work you witness in Brotherhood of the Cross and star are not performed by me. It is the promise of God, which is fulfilled in the last generation. We should try to confess our sins always, and know, whenever we sin, there is one who makes intercessions for us. Romans chapter 8 verse 34, 1 John chapter 2 verse 1. Brethren, I do not intend to be tedious unto you. All those who have ears to hear, let them hear.
May God bless his holy words. Amen. Thank you, Father.